this is episode four, 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 four of the Unknown Quarter. Wait, Welcome back, back Topher. Four, Are you happy to be back? Quarter? No. Unknown Quarter. Are you happy to but be back? I, I, but I, I'm no, I'm not. But I am happy. Okay. Are you happy to be Topher? No, but I am happy. With you. Awesome. So, and, and not a nice, not a nice double joke. Um, so what, what do you have today? In we going back, back, going back further than man has ever gone. Well, back into the primitive days of sports. No, not even that primitive. But where we're starting is a long time ago. The year is nineteen, around nineteen forty. So we're in Buffalo. Buffalo needs a new auditorium because their old one was built in 1858 and they needed an update. So they built the Buffalo Memorial Auditorium, known in Buffalo as The Odd. Clever, oh. I know. Um, and mm-hmm. as a building built in 1940, not great, but for the time it was good. It served its purpose and, you know, uh, it got the job done. And so, you know, the Sabres, the the city of Buffalo didn't have a pro sports team. Well, they had, um, well, they didn't have a pro hockey team. Um, But they, uh, so, of course, they had the Buffalo Bills, as you know of. Uh, They didn't exist until uh, 1959. And, of course, they didn't play in this auditorium. But still, that was their... uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if that was the first pro Buffalo sports team. I, I don't think it was, but it's it's like probably the oldest one that still exists because there's only two of them. The second one was the Buffalo Sabres, the hockey team, that which was... entered. What's that? Nothing. <laughs> Go on. Nothing. It's even funny, dude. This is history. This is important. <laughs> yes. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Buffalo it sports, won't happen it's real. Yep. <laughs> buffalo, New York, by the way, not like the animal, the buffalo. I was thinking of the chicken. Ah, uh, that's where it comes from. Oh, is that why? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's why they call it buffalo chickens because it was made in buffalo. The sauce, oh. anyway. Oh, I, I, well, the chicken wasn't. I, I, but the I, sauce was I made in buffalo. And then they put it on the I thought it just I thought it just sounded spicy. So like I, I was. Well, like, it, I mean. Wanna... How the hell does Buffalo sound spicy? Uh, I mean, they're here Buffalo wings for all your life, and then not imagine Buffalo is associated with spicy. Well, yeah, now you think that, but when they were first naming it, I mean, that's not well, like they, a... Yeah, no, no shit. No one's like, man, you know, in, 1940, in 1939, Buffalo. Oh, you, know, you know what's weird, though? Um, both the Buffalo teams, so the one's called the Bills, one's called the Sabres, Neither of them, like, both of them have logos that include the animal, the buffalo, even though neither yeah. of them are named for the buffalo. One's Bill's, named after Buffalo Bill, the, the showman, the Wild West guy. And the other one was the Sabres, which were named after the fucking swords. And the swords are in their logo, but there's a big buffalo in their logo, so. Yeah. Also, look up their logo history. They have, like, a, one of their logos is, like, a, um... It's like a, it looks like a banana. It was like the late two thousand, early to late 2000s, they had this logo. And they called it the Buffa Slug. Because it looks like a slug, but it's got like little horns on it. So it's like, it, it was awful. <laughs> so, um, they came to the league in 1970 uh, with the Vancouver Canucks, who are also still in the league. Um... And they were, you know, a young expansion team. The mm. issue, the thing with the, the auditorium is that it served its purpose well, but the, the issue was that it didn't have air conditioning, being a building from 1940. Oh, so um, yeah. it, it did receive updates. So um, in 19, in the inaugural season of the How Sabres, big, which was 19, what's that? How big of the update was it, like a couple of Well, it was... Yeah, they, they fucking got a, a, a couple gigabyte hard drive and plugged it into this arena to <laughs> uh, Gen Z humor. Okay, all right, go on. 
An eight, $8.7 million renovation, I actually didn't bother to look up what the inflation for that would be since it was like exactly 40 years ago. Um, but I imagine a lot. Um, uh, the arena's roof was raised 24 feet to make room for an upper level that increased the arena's capacity from 10,449 for hockey to over 17,000 for, for basketball and 15,360 for hockey. Uh, because the, they had a, a franchise called the Braves, the Buffalo Braves, um, that played basketball. Um, and by by 1973-74, it was raised to 15,858, making it a more suitable home for the NBA and NHL, even though there's no NBA team in Buffalo to this day. But it was a it was a good amount. I mean, I mean nowadays you have arenas that are like 18,000 to 20,000 in the NHL. That's the average. So. Not bad. We're getting there. Uh, but, of course, it didn't have air conditioning still. So, because I would imagine that that's just something that I, I couldn't find why they didn't. I guess it's pricey, you know, to put it in such an old building. Uh, now, this wasn't a problem. You know, Buffalo is, is much, you know, one Philadelphia. The buff, Buffalo is colder. It's in, like, you know, north northern, western New York. So it does get very cold there, and the summers are, are warm, but not too warm. Uh, and the Sabres weren't playing into the postseason. They, they weren't playing that deep. Um, so it didn't really matter for the first couple years of their existence until 1975. Because five years into their existence, they decided they were going to be good enough to play for the Stanley Cup. I imagine you know what that is. Yeah, the Stanley Cup. Yeah, it's a giant cup. Stanley that... himself a cup, and like we all celebrate. And like Lord Stanley. I mean, you do get to drink out of it if you're good enough. Oh, awesome. Yeah, you actually, if you win, you do get to drink out of the cup. Um, whatever like you want, I assume. Supper type shit? Um, or is it just like the one dude? Or is it like <laughs> the MVP? Or is it like the team who shares it? Everybody gets to. Everybody on the team gets to. But I, I'm trying to imagine like this hockey team that's just hyper about winning the championship. It's like... Take this, my brothers, and drink from it, like all peacefully and shit. <laughs> this is my just winnings. like like thirty pounds or some shit. Like it's it's not light, but this is our winnings that will be earned. By... I don't know. <laughs> God damn those lights! <laughs> Any Catholic Church boys know what I'm talking about? Catholic Church squads. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, you know, I was never an answer boy, but I could absolutely like know how long to ring that bell for because it just burned into my mind. <laughs> like five seconds, six seconds, I think. <laughs> so uh, they made it to the Stanley Cup Finals in 1975. Now, who were they facing in the Stanley Cup Finals that year? It's over. Do you do you know who this is? Um, Penguin. No. I don't know anything. Shut up. The Flyers. <laughs> oh, okay. Our own oh, hometown, my favorite team, Philadelphia Flyers. Cool. So, of course, the Flyers were also an expansion team, though they were an expansion team in 1967. They came along with six other franchises. Or actually, they came along with five others. It was, it was a six-franchise expansion. This was the first one. So the league was like six teams, the original six. And then they were like, we got to expand. So they added six more teams in 1967. So that was with the Flyers, the Penguins, uh, the Kings, the Minnesota North Stars, St. Louis Blues, and the California Seals. A couple of those teams don't exist anymore. Um, the Seals ceased uh, completely. They, they folded for after not too long after this. Um, and the Minnesota North Stars in the 90s moved to uh, Dallas and became the Dallas Stars. Hmm. Uh, yeah, fascinating. I know. I know um, you're peaked with uh, anticipation. Um, no, 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 no. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just gathering the information. I have Hockey. nothing witty to say. Um, so the Blues were the were good for the first. I think they made the Stanley Cup the first two years of their existence, and they lost both times. They actually won the Stanley Cup last year. They were the last still existing original six team to win the cup. Um, so yeah, they they won the cup last year, but they didn't. They they had they went to the cup those first two years, and then I don't think they ever made it back until 
like last year. So, um, so then the Flyers, they were they were a team that actually got pummeled by these St. Louis Blues. Like when they made it to the when they would face each other, and, and even in the playoffs, they would get the shit beaten out of them because hockey was much more violent back then than it is now. So the Flyers, not liking the shit getting beaten out of them, said, we need to build a tougher team. So they, they got a bunch of tough dudes, big dudes. They were good dudes. They could score and all that stuff, but tough dudes. So the Flyers became a very good team. And in 1974, they won the Stanley Cup for the first time. The first new expansion team to win the Cup over the Boston Bruins. So Awesome. So now we're heading yeah, into 1975. Uh, the Flyers came off of they, their record was 49, 16, and 15. Now back in the, the 15 at the end meant they tied. So 15 ties. There was no overtime, I believe. Or if there was, a, there might have been an overtime and like nothing else. So if the score was tied, the score was tied. That was it. You got to tie. Which is fucking awful. I hate ties. I uh, will. Uh, I would rather like wear a tie than watch a tie in a game. You feel me? Uh, I'd rather tie a tie for twenty people than watch a tie. It, it, it's it's awful. So, but the ties aside, uh, they met in these nineteen seventy five Stanley Cup Finals, the Buffalo Sabers. Um. Mm-hmm. Actually, no, the Buffalo Sabres had a record of 49, 16, and 15. My bad, I fucked up. Um, My bad. Yeah, so they, they had their first good year. Five years into their existence, making it to the Stanley Cup Finals, pretty damn good. Um, the Flyers were in their eighth season at this point. So, uh, of course, they were no, these were the Broad Street Bullies team. That's where the term came from, is these teams. Um, their record was 51, 18, and 11 heading into this. And, of course, they were the defending Stanley Cup champions heading into this year. So they were the favorite team, you know. Everybody was like, mm, these guys are fucking legit, you know. They're tough. But the Sabres were, of course, up to the challenge. Um, now, of course, the Flyers at home ice advantage because they had the better record. And their building was the Spectrum. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Um, I suppose I would be, but I don't know. Well, it was, it was demolished in 2010, um, but it was their first home, and it was built in 1967. It was built specifically for the Flyers, and the later the Sixers moved in. Um, and it was a modern building. It had air conditioning. Ah, air conditioning. Final. Final. Ah. That's a, I mean, for all of it gets hot in the summer, so it was very necessary. Um. So the Flyers played the first, the Sabres played the first two games of the 1975 Stanley Cup Finals there. It was in May uh, the Stanley Cup took place. Now it takes place in June, although I don't think it'll take place at all this year, but we'll see. Uh, usually it's supposed to be in June, but back then it was in May because there was um, one less round and there were less teams. Um, it was a best of seven series, so the Flyers had a two uh, two nothing advantage. They took the first two games at home. They won both games. Awesome. So now we're heading to Buffalo for game three. So so how it works is um, the home the team with the better record gets the first two, the team with the lesser record gets the next two, and then they alternate the rest of the way. Okay. So. Uh, now remember, this is May twentieth, nineteen seventy five. Game time temperature in Buffalo was 75 degrees with 62% humidity, with a high of 82 on the day. Yeah. So the humidity is rising, and there was no air conditioning, and temperatures near the ice reached almost 90 degrees. Oh. Now, Topher, yes. I would imagine that having that much heat, now, that, coupled with the fact that there's tons of humans, this is a Stanley Cup final, so the place is packed. And people are like, oh, oh, that too? Doesn't help. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's all coming together. It's all coming together. So that eventually the ice melted and they started swimming. No. <laughs> That'd be amazing. That's the end of the pod, guys. <laughs> that was the infamous swimming pool game of 1975. 
that's what you would, and that's what you would instantly think what would happen. But um, no, actually, a bunch of weird shit happened. Um, so uh, through through the game, because of the heat, a bat that had been living in the rafters swooped down to cool off. It's like, dude, this shit's it's fucking hot as shit in here. Even rising. the bats are like. And bats hang off the ceiling, the, the highest point of the building. Wow, so for down. the highest point of the building is the ceiling? Wait, but no, it's two stories, but no, it doesn't see through walls. Just how the... Well, yeah, it was in the rafters, so it was in the high point of the building, you were right. The, the, heat was fucking... would be, the heat would be absorbed by the bat. Well, apparently bats are fairly plentiful in the Buffalo area. And uh, so it swooped down, it's like, ah, I need to get close. I... It's fucking hot as shit in here. These fucking weird monkey creatures are making it so hot in here. You know? I would assume. I don't know how bats think, but one would think they talk like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, sorry. I just got a call out of nowhere. My bad. Fucking damn it. This damn bat's ruining our call. <laughs> so <laughs> it's it swooped down to the ice. And it got a bit too close to Sabres forward Jim Lorenz, who um, decided to um, to to uh, catch it and uh, make friends with it, and they developed a loving friendship. No, just kidding. He knocked it down and killed it. Fucking dead. Yeah, bat murder, dude. The bat swooped down onto the ice, got too close to to the Sabres forward, and he fucking killed it with his stick. The bat got too fucking close, and he was like, oh, fuck this shit, and he just whacked it with his fucking stick. He killed it instantly. He fucking died. He fucking died, yeah. dude. He killed it. He fucking killed that little cute bat. All he wanted to do was get cool, and this dude's like... Ugh. Yeah, it's kind of sad when you think about it. That is sad. Little bad friend. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, so you I think you're gonna like this part. So because he did I, that, I don't like it right now. <laughs> well, no, you don't. You don't like it. We don't like the, the the bat killing. But his teammates decided to uh, give him the nickname Batman. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he doesn't even play baseball. Now I'm very confused. <laughs> I mean, that, that sort of actually works on a number of levels, because he swung his stick like a bat. I mean, actually, he didn't. He kind of, like, chopped it downwards. There is video of it. You can check it out. Um, he just whacked it and just killed it. <laughs> so, uh, uh, now we have a dead bat lying on the ice. Uh, Flyers center, Rick McLeish, picked up the deceased animal and put him in the penalty box. Oh, um. He got a penalty for that? <laughs> That's what I was saying. <laughs> <That dog. laughs> penalty on the bat for dying. <laughs> he got a fucking penalty. <laughs> for not having a life. Um, for, uh, while this was was happening, Flyers defenseman Joe Watson skated over to McLeish and told him not to touch the bat because he could get rabies. McLeish responded with, what are rabies? <laughs> so, yeah. he, he didn't know what fucking rabies were, I guess. Uh, like, I mean, I, not that you could get rabies from a dead bat. Like, you, Rick McLeish, like, he was dead, you know? Um, which he was, but, like, how, how does he not know what rabies are? Do you grow up not being taught about rabies? I mean, I was never taught about rabies. I found out in school. Wow. I didn't have rabies class. Yeah. I mean, I, you could also learn just by getting bit by a fucking... I mean, I, the first thing I would say is, like, don't... That, that fucking could be a vampire. Like, what if it was a fucking vampire, dude? Fucking flew down. <laughs> be fucking awesome. <laughs> Anyway, uh, bad shenanigans aside, all that happened, by the way, during a nationally televised Stanley Cup final game. So, bat got fucking killed and scooped up off the ice and put in the penalty box. 
And you would think that that would be the most um, entertaining thing that happened that night, or the weirdest thing, but uh, not exactly. Because we still have more to cover. Oh, shoot. I know, I threw you for a twist there. You thought that was the end of the episode? Oh, no. Strap in and strap on. (laughs) But don't put your strap on. Uh, The attendance that night was uh, 15,863. And on a hot night with no air conditioning, what had basically happened was the heat, the fog started to rise from the ice. <laughs> so we had bats, now we have fog. It's shaping up to be a haunted house while people are playing inside of it. Um, the, the fog obscured players' legs and in some instances their entire bodies. Fans of the building and on TV had trouble following the play through the ghost of the atmosphere. So imagine watching a game through fucking fog. <laughs> it's not fun. Imagine no. playing in fog. Uh, it's that not be fun. More like steam? No, no, that? Steam, just, it'll be way too hot. Yeah, it'll be fog. Yeah, yeah, because it, it's weird. Because like the ice, there's like machines that like keep the ice cold. I think that's how it works. I, I don't know exactly how they, all that works, but um, there was still like enough heat to kind of like bring up moisture from the ice and kind of like disperse it in the air like it was just like at the level of like where the rink was so it, i think there was it was bit... like pipe cooling i don't know i don't know how it works but oh. it, it just it just kind of like it obscured basically it's, it's the thing is about hockey is that it's a sport where you follow a tiny black object and now we've introduced fog so that's that's not good <laughs> that's like fucking trying to play is football it? and i fucking put the eye patches on your fucking face uh, I mean, that's being the QB and just putting two white houses. Actually, there was a there was an NFL game that um, featured fog, and it also featured a team from Philadelphia. Maybe we'll cover that in a later episode. Uh, <laughs> something to look forward to. Despite all this, the f- foreshadowing, for for fogging, I guess. Uh, despite other supplies held a 4-3 lead heading into the third period on the verge of taking a 3 nothing series lead. And, you know, when you have a 3 nothing series lead, you need to win one more game and you're, you're good. So you don't want to go down 3 nothing because that basically means the series is over. So um, defenseman Bill Hodgt, H-A-J-T, I didn't bother to look at the pronunciation, but I, I, hockey pronunciations are the worst, dude. They, they suck so bad. Every fucking dude has the most complicated name ever. Like what? Like you know, dude, like if you were a hockey player, you you would fit. Your last name is perfect for a hockey player's name. Oh, because there are long names like that. But like, imagine ten times worse. Uh, I don't want to uh, imagine something worse. I, I, I would I would bring them up, but I can't pronounce them, so I can't bring them up. <laughs> oh, it's awful. Um. He scored midway through the third period to tie the game at 4-4. And the game went into overtime. So now we have overtime in fog. Get ready. Uh, The fog had forced play to be stopped five times during the first three periods so that players and rink workers could skate around the ice to try to dissipate it. Literally, they skated around the ice with fucking sheets to try to dissipate the fog. (laughs) I can imagine it's like a it's like a pre game show. Like, <laughs> can you imagine that show? Just fucking like just a bunch of dudes with sheets fucking skating around. Puts the classical music on. Imagine if like you you didn't see this like so so like when you this game started you like saw the players play normally and then you go went to get a hot dog and you came back and there's dudes with sheets running around the ice and it's all foggy you'd be like what the fuck's going on? Did I, did I walk in the Broadway? What's going on? Did everybody fucking get high on the ice? Is this a fucking weed fest or some shit? Did Snoop show up? Did Snoop Dogg show up? It's fucking Snoop, Snoop Dogg. He's a coach on one of the teams. <laughs> uh, so, play was stopped seven more times during overtime for the same reason. Seven times during the overtime period alone, because that's how bad the fog was. They couldn't fucking see. Wow. But somehow, you would think that not being able to see the object that you're supposed to prevent from going in the net, 
you would think that the overtime would last like two seconds. It lasted 18 minutes and 29 seconds, and the overtime period was like 20 minutes. Oh, my God. So they didn't score during that part, partially because they couldn't see the puck, too. It was like, why the fuck is it? I don't oh, know. No. There's fuck. I can't even see the other team. <laughs> I can't see the other team. I can't see the object I'm supposed to be using to score. Like, what the hell? Like, it made it a fucking... I, I mean, they, I don't know if that, there's, like, a full upload of the whole game anywhere. I don't think so, but there is clips from oh, it, and it's just... I mean, I would love to see a full, like, video, uh, video of that game because shit's insane. Um, so, uh, in 18, so yeah, at 18 minutes, 29 seconds, Rene Roberts or Robert, I'm not exactly sure if you say it in like a fancy French way or not because some of these dudes are French Canadian and they have like these French Canadian names. Um, yeah of the Sabres scored, giving the Sabres a victory. Of course, a hockey overtime first to score wins. So he scored, they won, the series is now 2-1 to one in favor of the Flyers. Um, you could say that the fog helped them a little bit, but the Flyers also got to play in the fog, so it's kind of like a fair game, you know? So Flyers goalie, Bernie Parham, and I, that, that name I know how to say because I'm a fan and He's perhaps he's he's widely regarded as the best goaltender in Flyers history. Um, he said it, he said this. He said it was incredibly difficult to see the puck, so much so that he said if somebody shot from the red line, and the red line is basically center ice, they had a good chance to go in. Hmm. This is coming from a dude who like excelled at the position, saying that if someone shot it from about as, almost as far away as you possibly could. You would go. You would have a good chance of going in because you couldn't see it. Not that anybody would try that shit, especially in the Stanley Cup. But still, the fact that that I mean, and I, I believe him because it's just it's so hard to see. I mean, in fact, I'm going to explain the second the reason why this puck went in was because of the fog. Um, the guy who scored, Robert or Robert, I didn't look up his name. Uh, sorry to him if he's still alive. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> he said he wasn't even trying to score, just trying to get it on that so his teammates could get the rebound. But Perron didn't see it, and it went in between his legs. So sometimes in hockey, he'll throw the puck at the nets, just so not even like a quality shot, just so it can bounce off and someone can get the rebound. But uh, it just it went in. So he was like, the, the cool, fucking sweet, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm the hero, even though I was trying to be. <laughs> like, can you imagine? Like, like, that's the best feeling when you, like, don't mean to do something, but it, like, works out extremely well. That accomplishments. That's like you're, you're trying to, to get a job as, like, a, a janitor, and you end up being the CEO. Like, how'd this happen? I'll, I'll take it, but what the fuck happened? That sounds like blasphemy. <laughs> sounds like bullshit. Uh, so, yeah. so this fog game, the Sabres would go on to tie the series. They actually won the next game because there was another game at the Sabres Auditorium. Um, then tie the series to 2-2, to but the Flyers won 5-1 to at the Spectrum Game 3 and 2 nothing. or no, yeah, no, Game 5, sorry. Game 5, the Flyers won 5-1 to at the Spectrum and 2 nothing. In Game Six at the um, the Sabres Arena, which uh, unfortunately didn't have another fog incident, although that would have been uh, awesome. <laughs> um, and then the Flyers won the series and won their second consecutive Stanley Cup. Also, their last Stanley Cup. Sadly, pain, <laughs> pain. Uh, so. There are also interesting fun facts. The Flyers' 1975 team was the last Stanley Cup championship team to be composed completely of Canadian players. Hmm. So every team wow. since then has had, a team, has had at least one European or American or... That's basically it. They don't come from anywhere else. Uh, the Flyers in 1975. Wow. No other team since then has had a fully Canadian roster. 
It's just hard to do. There's a lot of good players from from Europe and, and even the U.S. nowadays. Um, well, that's what I'm gonna say. Become more like. And I, and I can tell you that the history. The Flyers actually made the Cup a third consecutive year, but they lost to the Canadians. Um, and then they made the Cup uh, five more times in their franchise history, losing every single one of them, and continuing my pain, uh, painful existence as a Flyers fan. But at least the team's good now, so that makes me happy. But still, we're yeah. talking like 45 years of no Stanley Cup victory, so that's, that sucks. But That's older yeah. news, so it's not too bad. Yeah. So um, the Sabres... Um, went on to um, not make the Stanley Cup Finals again until 1999, where they faced the expansion team that moved to Dallas, the Dallas Stars, and the Dallas Stars beat them. So mm -hmm. and since then, see, it all comes around full circle. Uh, since then, the Sabres have not won a Stanley Cup, and they've missed the playoffs, I believe, for the past nine seasons in a row, something like that. Um, they're very poorly run, so... Yeah. Poor Buffalo. Uh, though, so as for the auditorium, the odd. Yeah. I'm sure you're dying they to install know. Install insulation? No. I actually have no idea. Um, <laughs> uh, I, think, I believe at some point they did. They, they, they renovated it at some point because there were other renovations. So, um, there, there, uh, there were plans. So, the, um, they moved out of the odd, the odd, as they call it in Buffalo, I, I believe, uh, in uh, 1996. And the Sabres moved to their current stadium, the Key Bank Center, which is a modern stadium. It was built the same year as the current Flyers Stadium. Uh, I assume it has air conditioning. Uh, it safely can assume. Yeah. Uh, either that or they just have giant blocks of ice under the, uh, above them. It's true. Like giving off coolness, I don't know. <laughs> um, there was actually plans. So, so the odd, interestingly, uh, it did, they didn't demolish it right away, but it also had no tenants. So when buildings have no tenants, they just kind of sit there empty for a long time and they deteriorate, which is exactly what happened to the odd. However, there was plans to turn it into a Bass Pro Shop. A Bass Pro Shop? A Bass Pro Shop, which oh, is, you know, it's got all the fishing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that fell through, uh, just didn't work out. But, but it's, not a, it's not as far-fetched as you think, because um, in Memphis, they had this building called the, um, the Pyramid. And it was going to be like an arena, and it, and it didn't pan out, but it's just straight up a Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, and it got turned into a Bass Pro Shop. <laughs> <laughs> it, had a giant, like it was a pyramid, but it was a pass pro shop. What's that? You shouldn't raid a pyramid. <laughs> raid the pyramid? You shouldn't raid a pyramid. Hmm. So um, it sat empty and uh, deteriorating from 1996 to 2009 when they finally said, fuck it, demolish it. And uh, that was it. That was the end of the odd. So it, the, the spectrum was demolished around the same time, actually. Um, sadly, but it, of course, the odd was like at this point at two thousand by two thousand nine, it was like, what, like a sixty year old building. I mean, it was old. So, uh, and that's it. That's the story of the Fog Game from nineteen seventy five, Game Three of the Stanley Cup Finals, and yeah. also known as the Rise of Batman because. To kill the fucking bat. So what'd you think? I think it was pretty cool, actually. Like, well, it wasn't cool. Man. It was hot as shit. Well, oh shit! You you pulled a one eighty on me. Yeah, you didn't see that coming, did you, fucker? I didn't. I didn't at all. Wow. <laughs> wow. How, how inappropriate. Yeah. So. It, it, it kind of interesting. Why, I wonder why there was only one bat in there. Like, why was there only one bat chilling in there? I, I think there was just one bat stupid enough. Or like, he went first to check if it was safe. I mean, uh, he uh, he gave a <laughs> he, he was for a noble cause. All the other bats no, survived. No, don't go down there. I'm gonna check if it's safe. 
It's not all the time. Tell my wife I love her. I don't know. I don't know why the dude killed the bat though. Like, like that's like the vicious. Like he just swatted it with his stick and killed it. Uh, I mean, it's not that bad, Tom. No, no, it's a bat. It's like, you know, it's not gonna hurt you. It's yeah, just it's fucking a, yeah, it's around. a bat. It's a bat. Good, he I'm not going for it. He, he batted at it. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. Um, ever since then, there hasn't really been a fog type hockey game because arenas have air conditioning, which is good because there's an arena in Arizona. So, if there was no air conditioning there, they would literally be swimming because that place gets hotter than fucking. A pair of sweaty butt cheeks, I don't know. How many sweaty butt cheeks? No. Uh, what's that? I said, how much sweaty butt cheeks? Hotter than sweaty butt cheeks, I said. Hotter than sweaty butt cheeks. Arizona does. So, uh, that's it for this week. Um, thank you for joining us for our first hockey episode. So, we've had a couple football episodes, we've had a basketball episode, we have a hockey episode. To try to find a, a good baseball topic. I'm sure there's plenty of weird instances that I could probably find. Um, but we'll leave that a surprise for our episode in two weeks from now. So thank you for joining us. This has been episode four of the Unknown Quarter. Uh, I'm Ant. That was Topher. We appreciate mm-hmm. you stopping by, listening. Make sure to check out our social media pages on Twitter and Facebook at Philosophy Pod on Twitter, Facebook Philosophy Pod. Uh, this is the mini series, The Unknown Quarter. We upload every t- this one every two weeks. Um, so, yeah, make sure to check out the other episodes, The Right Tracks, and our main pod, which is just the podcast, the main shit. Uh, thank you for joining us. Say goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>